Well, good afternoon everybody, once again, welcome back to the plot. Or back home where I'm starting off this morning, I've just turned lunchtime here in the North East, it's absolutely beautiful, sun shining, and of course, as I've been saying in the previous videos, the sun's just starting to rise above my roof now, so I'm getting a little bit of sunshine in the greenhouse in the afternoon, it's absolutely fantastic, glorious day up here, and of course we've been mid-March, uh, beginning of March, I want to start my um, early sowings of tomatoes, peppers. I have got a few um, sowings that I put in a couple of weeks ago. As a rule, I don't like sowing until around about the March time with tomatoes. Uh, but with the um, the new varieties I got last year, I got sent up uh, two or three different varieties from right around the country. I was over the moon with them. I had some fantastic crops. Um, so I was well pleased with them. I was saying that one of the gentlemen that sent them up, uh, Mike Street, um, was having a problem germinating his, his seeds. Now, uh, I never have a problem with my own seed, um, very rarely. And of course, this is this is what I like to do with mine. So, um, for you, that's going to be receiving seeds of us in the next week or two. This is the way I like to do it. It's a, it's a simple method. Um, I'll first I'll find out the pot. I always forget, I always forget to, to get the regular now. You notice the door, I've got the door jaw here because it's that warm in here. It's actually 75 with the sunshine on the roof. Now this is just a, the first three greenhouses of an evening. Now it did drop down to 35 through the night. Of course we have been having a few frosty mornings here in the northeast, so you've just got to be very careful. And this is why I like to use the propagator tops. Um, just in case there's any really cold mornings, and these are saver seedlings. But uh, I'll show you them in a while, and we'll uh, we'll get started potting off. But um, as I say, this is the way I like to, to do my seedlings. What I do at the end of the year, open the tomato up, and I like to wash it in a bit of warm water. Get all the rubbish off it. Get all the all the skin, all the bits of flesh off it, and then put the put the seeds through a sieve, and then I turn them onto just a bit of old common kitchen paper just like that. Now if you're if you're getting seeds from us, um, I've promised a few people uh, seeds, so if you're going to get seeds from us, well it's an easy job. Um, what I like to do with mine once I dry and on the kitchen paper, I like to just dust them with a bit of yellow sulphur and it keeps the seeds really healthy and then just get popped into an envelope. Now I don't mind licking the envelopes on these, it's when you start licking them when you're putting chilli seed in, that's a no no. That's what I did the other week and I posted on my Facebook page. My actually lips were burning for about two hours afterwards. This is not so bad, but the, uh, the yellow sulphur tastes foul. So you've just got to be careful where you're dusting when you put your seeds in. So I've cut that one in half, and this is, of course, this is a giant orange one. Now, I haven't sown any giant orange myself yet, so this is going to be my first sown. Quite an easy job to do. Uh, you want a six cent centimetre pot, that's all you want. Nice. Compost, now I'm using the same compost for me tomato seeds as what I will be doing for potting them off. I'm going to pot off a few this afternoon because they're, they're just at the size that I like them. If you're watching my videos, you'll know that I never pot anything up too early. Now I had a, um, I had a load of room in here last week. All I had in was my prop getting trays, uh, a few of the begonias. Um, petunias, a few of the seeds I like to start with early, the bilia, geraniums are shooting through nicely and of course I've been landing with four dozen show leaks and uh, a big tree of show onions, they're taking up all this side bench here um, they're not a big one but uh, I've got four dozen of them so they're going to be they're going to come in handy for the garden, I'm, they're mainly stock leaks, uh, we'll put them in the trench and see how they go but uh, apart from that um, I'll not be showing anything this year Right, so that's it. That's a pot done, and of course, get your old spray of chamomile, chamomile tea in there for all the time for seedlings. And I always give the top a good soaking first. Pre-soak your, your compost all the time. It's no good putting your compost in, putting your seeds in, a bit of compost on top, then pouring water over the top of them and dislodging all the seedlings. Um, I like soaking the, the compost first. 
And then all I do with my seedlings, there's a piece here, and there's a good dozen seed on there, and I'll just turn it to the seed downward, into the pot, and just make that fit the pot. It's an easy job to do, because the compost is wet now, and you gently tap that down, and there we have it. There's the seeds in the pot, and all that does now, all that needs now is a, just a light covering, quarter inch of compost over the top of it, and then into the tray. Now, it, as I say, I have got a little bit of heat on it in the greenhouse here. It's not much, it's only a little tube of light heater, just keeps this frost free in here. As I say, once the sun gets up through the day, then temperatures rock it up, so I like to keep the door open, and I like to keep the vent open. I never like to have it too hot in here. So that's my seedlings. That's one done. Once again. Same again. I just take the, the compost just an inch below the, the level of the top of the pot. Give it a good soaking. And it's a quite an easy job to do. And then once again, that's a piece of cut in half there. So we'll be sending two or three people of us for tomorrow's seed. So we'll be sending them out this week, as, uh, as well as a few melon seed. Um, I'll get them posted off to you, and you can try them. Now the seeds that Mike Sheep was on about. Or the Corfu tomato. Now he sent he sent us them up last year, and I grew them just cold, no heat whatsoever, and they were absolutely fantastic. I grew them in the trail bed in the greenhouse, and they're a fantastic crop. Nice big healthy tomatoes, nice nice and rich, um, nice skin on them, and really nice and tasty. So what I've done this year, I saved a lot of seed. And you know, as I say, as Mike's having trouble germinating his seed, so I'm going to send them. Some of mine that were his back down <laughs> that I saved from my crop last year, and they uh, hopefully you get a better germination from them. But that's the way to do it, Mike. As I say, just pop them in a little pot, and there we are. There's two pots of uh, giant orange here. We'll leave that for the time being because I know what they are, and put there uh, and put markers in them later on. Now, as I say, I love to use these little containers. Absolutely fantastic. They do get a lot of condensation in them, but if you leave the vent open through the day and close it in the evening, it's it's spot on. And there we have it. There's the first ones that I put in about three weeks ago. If you remember I sowing the seeds, and they're the Corfu tomatoes. Now they are perfect. They're just the nice size that I like to put on. I never put them on when they've got the two leaf stage. I always like to leave them till the, the, four, the second set of leaves are just starting to break out. And by then they should have a lovely root system on them. Now that's lovely and warm at the bottom there. They're sitting on that bottom tree there, and uh, the heat's hitting that, warming the tree up, and they're absolutely loving it. Oh, there we are. That was uh, that first class pot of Corfu. I'll be potting them ones up today. I'll get started in a minute. I just want to show you these ones. And th these are another one I tried last year. I've saved the seed. If you think they look a little bit leggy on the leggy side, it's quite an easy job to uh, to fix that. We'll sort that out in a minute. But they're the hillbilly, and they were like an orange and yellow striped, absolutely fantastic tomato, and a lovely big size, nice and juicy once again, and tasty. So I will be. And what I've done this year, I grew the hillbilly exactly the same way as what I grew the Corfu last year. I just grew them cold. Now uh, you know I like to set my tomatoes way about the middle of March. Just growing them cold. That's just in a tree, in a cold greenhouse, uh, with a bit of bull rot on, and under a sheet like that. And uh, they grow quite well, but uh, they'll be late. they'll be left until the middle of March before I start sowing cold. The uh, other containers have been going berserk. Um, I've got uh, some mini tomatoes in here. I've got some acid chocolate tomatoes, and I've got some more peppers and chilies sown. Now the chilies have been growing really well. I've got some sent up from John Murphy. Once again, John, thanks very much. Um, now these are the, the Long Joe chilies. You know, they're, they're fantastic. Uh, they're a really um, healthy looking plant. Uh, once again, never in a hurry to put them off. If they're looking healthy enough and they're, they're still growing strong, 
I'll just leave them in the pot. So I like, like, like to see them get at least four leaves on there before I start potting them up. Oh, well, they'll probably pot up next week. I'll just put them back in there. And I see, keep the covers open through the day. And it just cuts a little bit, cuts a lot of condensation down. Now these are the ones I got from John Murphy. Oh, I noticed John was potting his up through the week. Um, these are the red Thai chili, and they're looking absolutely lovely. First class. A little bit wet because uh, the condensation's been gathering on the inside and just run down in the tray, and of course the tray just keeps sucking it up. But they're looking great. I'm over the moon with them. That's the red chili ones. They'll they'll get potted up next week. And of course, I've got the yellow Scotch bonnet. Oh, there again, fantastic little plants. Lovely little plants, eh? um, I'm well pleased for, as I say, it's only early March. We've got stacks of time. You can just, uh, I've just sowed a few more chilies this morning. There's plenty of time, as long as you get a, a decent enough plant ready for April, mid to, April, mid to late April up here in the north, before planting out. If you've got a nice, big, strong plant, and then you get a good crop of, uh, of fruits from them. So that's the idea of getting them sown that little bit earlier. As I say, I've got tree folds in there that I've just sown for a, a secondary crop, which will come later on. But for the time being, I'm well pleased with that. What I have got here, I've got a container that's half empty. Um, so I'm going to use that to put my tomatoes into. And my tomatoes, when I put them off, I've got trays of chilies all over the shop. I've just sown them. I've got them sown. I can be really messy at times. I'll just pop them two down there and I'll put the markers on them in, in a minute. Right, so my cups for my tomatoes, what I like to start my tomatoes off in is uh, just ordinary drinking cups. And once they've filled that pot, I like to go into a nine centimetre pot. Nine centimetre pot for the final potting. Now, once they've filled that pot, they're ready to go into the garden. Oh, excuse me, are they ready to go into the polytunnels and the borders? Now, we always sow in borders, we don't sow in, uh, in pots or anything, because uh, we like to get them, get the roots well down in the soil. So with this mixture here, my own mixture, once again, it's multi-purpose compost, with my own compost mixed in, uh, handfuls of bone, bone meal, some sharp sand, plenty of sharp sand, as much as you can put in and uh, a couple of handfuls of perlite and it's a really free draining mixture because what will happen with these when they're potted off they'll just go into the tray without any holes in and then you can water everything from down below now the easiest job for these tomatoes as I say I'll just cover them up all I like to do is just half fill a cup with the compost I've just covered them tomatoes back over and I'm going to be putting off. So the Corfu, or the hillbilly I should say, there's the hillbilly there, there's two, four, there's five seed in there that come through and they're absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to use these first to pot off. Take a sign out, put the sign at the side so you know where it is. Take the full pot out, which is easy enough to do. And they should just break away. There we are. Really easy. First class. Lovely little seedlings. I'll just pop them in that tray for the time being. Up to one side. Now as I say, if you think your tomatoes are a little bit leggy, now it's a first class little plant. That's got a lovely little root system on it. And that's why I don't like putting off too early. I like it same with a good root system on. Your cup. Drop your plant in just ease it to the centre of the pot and your plant should just come level underneath the leaves with the top of your cup now to me I should put a bit of compost into there doesn't matter about over potting if you don't like me if you're walking from down below and there we have it that's the first one in that's such an easy job well, that little fella will just go in that tray there and sit in there and then I'll put the covers once I get these five done or these six done they'll fill that tray mark her back in and I'll put some water in the bottom of the tray you'll soak the whole water up 
put the cover back on top of them and they'll be fine for another week to two weeks in there and then once they fill this pot they'll go up the, up the plot and I'll use the, uh, the nine centimetres to pot them up with and then they'll stop in the, the melon house up there where there's a little bit of paraffin on, a little bit of paraffin heat not much, just keeping the frost free once again uh, so that gives it another fortnight so on to more or less the middle to the end of March which is fine for me once I get potted up into the nine centimetre pots they'll probably sit in there for another three weeks so that's giving it the middle of April to me that's spot on for up north here for planting out into the polytunnels mid to late April that's soon enough because we can still get frost as seen here every morning this morning we've had a frost it's been white on the garage roof outside so you know you just got to be very careful especially when I'm potting off seedlings I always make sure they've got a little bit of cover um, so they don't get there so they don't get caught out with the frost and it's the same with any seedlings you just got to be very careful with them don't there uh, don't go hell full of that to get them there uh, to get them out on the benches if you haven't got any protection it's an easy job just to uh, push a bit of fleece over or push a bit of um, newspaper over them and they'll, uh, they'll protect them there's another nice young plant there just pop that in push it into the centre and then some nice compost around it and I think it just such a satisfying job putting up tomatoes me as I say they'll we'll get them done I'll put some water some nice warm water warm water's in here already in the bottom of the tree there they can soak the water up and they'll be they'll be spot on they'll grow away just nicely but to say with that cover off I can take the covers off through the day when the sun's out so it's not too bad I put the covers on back of the night in it's just keeping them frost free and day and that's a whole idea but yeah um, that's my tomatoes that's the start of them I was, uh, I was well impressed with these last year because I, as I say I trialled them um, and I got both sets of tomatoes sent up for us um, so I'm really uh, I'm really excited as to see how they do with heat with this little bit of coming on this little bit earlier and with a little bit of heat and just um, compare them to what they were last year but uh, as I say I got a fantastic crop from them last year I was over the moon with them uh, really nice big beefy tomatoes and of course that's what it's all about it's getting your crop now I've only been 10 minutes I think and already I've gotten them um, 5 potted up such an easy job to do and I can, I can sit here for hours just flooding on just firming down and the perfect little tomato plants just in the little pots one more to do and I'm over the moon now this afternoon I want to get cracking on the brassicas March is a perfect time for them never planting too early March is fine for me it's all about your timing and what plot of country you're living in if you're down south no doubt you'll want to plant them a little bit earlier but uh, for us up north middle of March is fine it's giving you it's giving you hey, uh, five at least five six weeks and what I'll show you is how I grow my sprouts uh, they'll go into pots just like this once I pot it off and grow on into a nice big root ball but we'll we'll go all through that once we get up there but for the time being I'm gonna finish off these few toms have me pot of tea and then we'll get up the plot and we'll get started on these brassicas okay I'll see you up there soon Right, well, what a cracking afternoon. I can think it, we are, uh, I'm standing at the moment, but of course I'm in the shade of the, the new shed behind us. Managed to get the door fitted, all the windows fitted. So some little pieces to do on the outside. I've got a bit more felt to finish on the top of the roof, but apart from that, that's the shed done, and then I can get myself inside. But I can spend uh, time in the summer doing that when it gets a little bit quieter. Uh, as I say, at the moment it's getting, we're getting a bit busy here, starting to see it so and whatnot. Getting a few plants um, putting in here and there. Uh, Teas are coming up through the tunnel, so we're going to start weeding that out soon, get that done. The main job of the day, of course, is to uh, use it just about come to the end. 
and if you want first class sports like them, then just follow us and we'll show you how we, how we do all those things. That's what I want to do this afternoon. Get in. Uh, same time every year. Begin in March and they'll like show me brassic as cold. No heat whatsoever, just in there, cold greenhouse, up on the top shelves where there's stacks of light, nice and light, plenty of light. There's more about the coldness through the night. Yeah, these are as hardy as anything. And of course this is a, a strain called Maximus. I've used this for years. It used to be one of the old varieties like a Pierre Gint. Um, you kind of get them now, but the uh, Maximus is about the closest you'll get rid. It's a late cropper. Um, you can start cropping these from around mid-December through January, February, and of course into early March. I will probably finish these off in the next couple of weeks. Well, I've, why I want to take a couple down this afternoon, I want to get myself a nice few sprouts for my Sunday dinner. Plus I promised the um, the owner at Stables a nice bag of sprouts for his Sunday dinner. And of course the tops will be cut off and they go for the chickens. And they love them. Nice fresh, nice fresh greens for them. So that's, uh, that's my job this afternoon. Get a couple of these old stalks cut back. A bit of green for the hens. Some sprouts for us. And then we'll get us all inside and start sowing the new crop of brassicas. It's uh, cabbages, sprouts and some cauliflowers, some early cauliflowers. So we'll get stuck in that. As I see I've, uh, I've still got bits and bobs to do inside there, but that can wait. Um, no hurry for that. I can get inside on a, on a wet day, which no doubt we'll probably get a few of them. Uh, get myself inside and start building the benches in and get a bottom shed cleared out. And hopefully by next year I can get my fire set up. Yeah, I've got a little bogey stove down there and I want to run a couple, couple of cable around it, on the chimney, uh, a header tank and then a little radiator in the bottom end of the greenhouse and when we're up here put a little bit of heat on and it, um, it'll warm the place up. But uh, fantastic afternoon here in the north east, it's beautiful, sun shining again. As I say, when the shade here because of the camera it's going to distort the lens which it normally does. But uh, it's absolutely fantastic, it was... Um, 65 when I left the greenhouse down home, I've left the door open just a jar a couple of inches and uh, that's what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go down and check the bottom polytunnels Roger's been up first thing this morning, uh, we've been bagging some of the leaves up into other bags because uh, the lightweight bags started to split a bit so we've been bagging the leaves up and they, they'll be ready for June and July once the tomatoes are so far so far up, we'll, uh, we'll munch, mulch all the bed with, uh, with leaves but I'll show you that as I say, farther on. But for the time being, I'm going to get some more sprouts dug out, get them chopped down, get a big bag full for the birds, bag full for myself, and then we'll get in and we'll sow the new crop. Okay? Right, well, the temperature has certainly lifted a little bit in here. 70 degrees in a cool greenhouse. Unbelievable temperatures you can reach with a little bit of sunshine. Absolutely marvellous at the end of the afternoon, like I say. Just early March, but uh, what you've got to watch for is that frost early morning. So, as I said outside today, it's all about getting the brassicas in. I like, I like to get mine in just nice. Uh, get them sown this week. There'll be a fortnight before I prick them off. At least a fortnight, nice, strong, sturdy plants that be up on the top here in full light. No heat whatsoever though, just cold. And of course, don't forget, if you need them, I've got all my containers ready, just to sit on top of the trays through the night, but through the day, they can be taken off. And just let the cabbages grow away nice and strong. And you'll end up with nice, small, sturdy little plants ready for potting off. And we'll get potting off into, into a bigger cup. Um, I did have some knocking around before. Uh, that's the size, half pint pots. You suppose they'll go into there in a fortnight or three weeks' time, and they'll stop in there for about four weeks. And by then, hopefully, that pot will be absolutely chopper, filled to the point of being root bound. And that's the secret of good sprouts. You've got a good root ball there. If you have got club root, and I'll show you a couple of tips when we come to plant them out into the garden that will come at your club root. Um, there's a couple of comments in early January and December about people having sprouts in, and of course the sprouts blown. Well, the sp sprouts are blown is because uh, they've been put in the ground far too soft. They haven't been anchored well in, uh, blown around, and of course it, it slackens the roots off in the, in the heavy weather. If they haven't been staked up, I always stake mine up. 
I mean, it says in the pack of Maximus, uh, Maximus sprouts are only two and a half to three foot, but they can grow a little bit bigger than that with nice fertile song, uh, soil. So I put a good stake in mine, tie them up, and so they, 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 they stand up to the worst of the, the winter weather. So we'll get them in. I'm only going to use a half tray or a quarter tray uh, for the sprout, the uh, sprout Maximus, because you'll only get 40 seed in a packet. So once again, a quarter tray, um, your compost is just half an inch below the top and it's been well soaked. Once again, fresh water, nice fresh water out of the tank. We always check on that daily, we'll get the tap out, get the hose out and fill it up, nice fresh water. So always got the um, fresh water in the hand. And of course these are, are so simple to sow. And if you set them off early, set them off right, you should end up with a first class crop. And what I like to do with the Maximus, just tip them out with your hand. And there we have it. You might get a few more than 40, but uh, on average, they're usually spot on. And of course, these are almost the follicles. Uh, as I say, the Maximus, they were uh, they like a Pia Gent. Pia Gent was a, a variety years ago. Everybody used it. It was a first class sprout. Nice and strong, nice stem, first class sprout on. And uh, that's the closest I've, I've found to Pia Gent over the years, is Maximus. And I've used it for about 10, 15 years now. And it's spot on. So as I say, just a quarter tray, and all I'm doing is just broadcasting them because 40 seeds, not a lot, but tray like that, and that's spot on. Once again, got me little sieves, different kind of sieve if I need be. I've got a very fine one there. I'll just put a bit of compost in it. I'll shift that one up the road because that's for the broccoli. Put a bit of compost in here. Now, late, very late seven. Once again, it brings it up to just a quarter of an inch below the top of your tree. If you want to walk over the top, but there, uh, I never do. You know me. These will go on a tree under the propagator, and it'll be watered from underneath. Good glug of water in the tree. And with it being a nice sharp mixture, they'll soak up that compost. So that's that one away, with the one side. Put that one over there. Just put that packet on the top there, so you know where it is. That's a Maximus. Now I've got the cabbage dumping. Now this is the ones that grow in the polytunnel over the winter. These are the spring cabbage, but you can use these for the summer cabbage as well. They're a lovely point of cabbage and they're lovely and sweet. So I'll be putting a packet of cabbage dumping in. Uh, I'll be putting the, um, the old favourite, the Greyhound. I've got my broccoli, sprouting turtle broccoli to put in. And of course, there's another seed I like to use every other year. If you want a big cabbage, if you've got a big family, and you like a nice big cabbage, and then you kind of go past that, that's filled that crowd. And of course, it's from Mr. Fothergill's. If you give it plenty of room, it will reward you. No doubt with two, three kilo head cabbage. They're absolutely massive. Pull away the outer leaves and you've got a beautiful pointed cabbage. Um, I've used them for a, quite a few years now. Fill that crop. It's just to use up bits of the land. Let's go and spare. How you feel with them in? And if you've got a big family and you like your cabbage, that's the one to grow. Now there will probably be 350 seed on the top of there. So what I'll use for these is a full size seed tray. I don't have to sow them all. What I can do is to uh, open the packet up and take half out I'll keep that packet handy so I know what to I'll take roughly half of these out which is 170 and that'll go perfect and that yeah, there's loads in there so if I roughly gauge about half of that packet that's fine that can go away and that can go for a later sown in April, end of April to give an autumn cabbage so I'll do the same thing once again the tree is my own compost but it's been well soaked and all I'm going to do is just broadcast them all over the tray. And there's plenty of room for them because they'll only be in this tray for two to three weeks. I'll put that, that mixture that I've said into the next tray because that will be filled up with fresh compost and another nice bit of rough drainage underneath, as I showed you in the last day of video. 
once again just a fine covering now you can use multi-purpose compost if you want but for all these seeds I'll use my own compost there's plenty of air, plenty of feed in there as I said there's plenty of good soil in well sieved so it's well mixed in with the compost good sand a uh, bit of bone meal for feeding and they, they'll quite happily feed in there for, for two to three weeks by then they'll be nice short sturdy little plants for putting off into the pots and then they'll be ready for going into the garden but uh, I never have any trouble with the sprouts of here if you want to follow my advice and do it this way and then you'll end up with some first class crops for the end of the year now that's going straight up on the top here full light um, I've got three of seed up here that's starting to dry out a little bit so I'm going to have to go around them and check them all just need to shift a few of these trays out of the way put that there and then I can mark that up so that's the, uh, it's a filter crowd and it's a maximus in I'm all the one with that so these three pockets here I'll get stuck in in a minute um, I've still got plenty of compost left Tree. Take the rubbish out of the tree, put it inside. As I say, the stuff that's in the riddle you can go into the bottom of the tree. Like that. And it gives you first class drainage. So that's the next one. A handful of mule compost. It takes literally five minutes. Sort your trays out, get your compost in, nice and flat, just use anything that comes to hand, nice and flat, and once again a good soaking with nice fresh water, and you can tell the drainage on here, by the way the water just soaks through, no problem, and that's a, that's where you should have it, there you are, that's spot on that. That's ready for the next pack of the seed, which of course um, the broccoli. And if I look on that, that'll give us an idea of it's 400 seed. So I'm going to half that pack again. I'm going to do exactly as I did with the filter coat. I'll take half the seeds out, and then I'll put the rest of the pack away, and I can have a later sown later on through the air. But the brassicas are so easy to grow, uh, and as I say, the mainstay one is a sprout. I love my sprouts for the over Christmas and New Year, January, well it's now March and we're still cropping we'll probably get a crop off this week and we'll take the last crop off next week and then by then they'll be starting to go over so what we'll do, we'll chop them down take them round and give them the chickens around at the stables and then clear the land turn it over, put some manure in it and it's, it's good to go for either putting onions in or putting some seed in because it was well mucked last year for the sprouts and well limed so all I have to do is to get me me measure out, stick me probe into the garden when I've turned that over and get a, get a reading on it. If it's between 5 and 6, I'm quite happy. If it's a little bit low, I can boost her up with a bit of manure or a bit of lime, whatever. And uh, it's quite easy to keep an eye on your numbers on, on the garden. As long as it's healthy, it's, uh, it's not a problem. You'd be able to grow anything in it. I've got quite a few things I want to try out this year. Squashes, pumpkins. Uh, I've got some nice pumpkins off um, of John Murphy, so I'll be planting them in about a fortnight's time, John. I don't plant any of my heavy stuff like that, cucumbers, squashes, any, anything like that goes in April. And I'm quite happy putting them in at that time, because by then your light's coming, your full light, your heat's rising all the time, and so you shouldn't have any problem <coughs> with your squashes. So that'll be the pumpkins to do then. I've still got a lot of flower seed to do. Um, the Swan River Daisy are all slaving until the March time because they grow so quick. I'll be putting them in trays and I'll be sowing them like I normally do. Just no new tray, fill with compost, and I'll get me, me bit of stick or me bit of bamboo and just put three lines, press it into the, the moist compost and put three lines and then scatter the seed down the three lines and it's much easier for me to pot off. You can just take them out in little clumps, but I'll show you that next week. In the next video, we'll do that. Um, as I say, I've got plenty of courgettes I want to try this year. Them little summer holiday, that's a bonny little one. I'll be trying that one. 
Uh, so I've got antiranians to sow, and of course I've got the old favourites to do. Parsnips, which I'll be doing next week. Um, the parsnip tapes, they're great, great value for money. And of course the carrots. I want to sow some early carrots in amongst the Japanese onions, and that will give it. Hopefully, the Japanese onions will give us a bit of protection, a bit of companion planting. Uh, so I've got them to sow, and then of course the following week we'll start more turnips. These are big farm turnips, so I want to sow these in modules. We'll go into the bottom polytunnel in the next video, and we'll start sowing them. But they'll be singly sown in modules, same as with the beetroot, and we'll give them a try and see how they grow instead of sowing them direct into the soil. But uh, hopefully, once again, I'll give you a little bit of help. Um, things are starting to fill up in here, the same as what are down home. Getting a bit chocker now, so we're going to have to start boxing clever, because um, a lot of this stuff, once it starts breaking cover, it'll go into the bottom polytunnel. There's no heat in there whatsoever. Just up on the benches, right up on the, the highest level, so they get plenty of light. It's nice and cool in there, there's net around the side, so nothing's forced up. And I, I don't like to force anything up if I can, if I can help it. Uh, the melon house is absolutely packed out at the moment because I've got a lot of leeks and onions in there. Um, I've got some other plants, some uh, some more bedding plants to, to bring out there and pot up for a jump, pot them up next week. But uh, yeah, loads to do. And of course, one of the main jobs at the moment is keeping everything watered. So I like to come up the lunchtime, which is, you know, run up now, and uh, check on everything, and I can come back at night, and come back at 5, 6 o'clock, still light, and the sun goes down, and I can water everything. Uh, not when the sun's on it. I can, uh, I can get an idea of what he's doing, um, and I can come up with a watering can and just go right through it. It's nice and cool. Or first thing in the morning, if I can get up. But for the time being, I'm going to crack on with the last of these cabbages. It's broccoli. Get these planted in, and then I'll show you in a week or a fortnight's time in the next video when we start pricking them off into pots. But get them up here, top shelf if you can, up where there's plenty of light, and you'll have no problems growing them on. You want nice, strong little sturdy plants. You don't want big leggy things like that. Excuse me, if you end up, if your plants end up growing leggy, then there's a way around that. I'll show you that. You can, uh, you can plant them really deep in your pot, right up to the leaves, and that way it'll It'll help them get a bigger root system and help them grow on a stronger plant. There's nothing worse than trying to pluck, transplant leggy cabbages and uh, brassicas because, uh, as I say, it's all about the light. Get them up on the top shelf. You don't need any heat. Where it's cool, just sheltered spot for you and uh, they'll grow away quite easy. All mine have got is a plastic container over the top and, uh, and a cold greenhouse. As I say, they're left open through the day. In the evening, I can cook and shut them down. If I think it's going to be cold, I can shut them down, and that just stops the condensation building up. Because the last thing you want is to get it too wet and too much condensation dripping on your young plants, and that's the first sign of your disease kicking off if you're dampening off. So keep an eye on them. No cloth, they can be wiped out through the day. That's why I like to take them off through the day so that they get a chance to dry out in the sun, and then in the evening, you can put them back on. Such an easy job to do, five minutes of your time, and it'll save you. Weeks of heartache if you do lose your plants and you're having to start from scratch again soon. So, just a couple of little tips here. Help you get your brassicas in. So, I'm going to, uh, I say I'm going to call it there. Quite happy. I've still got a few tomatoes to pot off down home. I want to finish them off when I go back down there. Uh, and I've got some grass to cut at the door. So, the jobs are just piling up and piling up and piling up. But, um, hopefully, I'll get through them. A uh, bit at a time. I'm not going to hurry myself. The, um, as I posted on my Facebook page last night, the, the peach trees just come into bloom here. It's absolutely fantastic. Nice pink flowers. Uh, and we'll miss all these little bits and pieces when we're flying around the garden at uh, 50 miles an hour, trying to get everything done. Uh, it looks so beautiful. I've given a good bucket of water there this morning. I haven't sprayed it with anything yet this this season. I'm just hoping it's going to stop nice and clean. Um, peach trees can't pick up a few... Uh, Tests and diseases, so I'm just going to try and keep an eye on that and uh, see how it grows in the tunnel. But for the time being, I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to knock off for, for this video. Um, thanks for all the new subscribers. There's loads of them coming online. I'm over the moon with that. Uh, as I say, if you don't forget to comment down below, or if you can't wait for the videos, 
you know what my Facebook page uh, Jeff Holman on the plot um, send our friends request and we'll sign you up and you can chat with most nights through the week uh, loads of lads been uh, coming through the week different bits and pieces you know and if we can help we'll help you uh, we're always there we're always online just, so just uh, send us a message and if we cannot help you there's always somebody on our site that will there's uh, plenty of like men the gardeners on the site now so just enjoy it as I say, thanks again for the subscribers, and uh, we'll see you all again in a week's time. And we'll get cracking on these uh, the last of the flowers to sow. And of course, we'll do the, the parsnips outside, and we'll do the, the first of the carrots outside. Okay? I'll see you all again next week. Bye for now.